Good day guys, my name is Ashton, I'm from Fly Beyond Studios. Today's topic is basically baking ambient inclusion onto your game model inside Cinema 40 using the bake texture tag and doing it the right way. So I'm a little sorry about the little noise in the background, that's just my PC. So let's try to um, get started with ambient inclusion. Well if you do not know what it is, well search it up on Google, I'll have the link in the description to find out what it is but it's basically just shadow that we bake onto the object to give it more detail and to give it a little more of that that richness to the model so in this little picture here this is my friend work Austin and he did this in blender I'm just gonna zoom in I'm gonna just zoom in on the garage and this is where you can see where I'm in inclusion really comes in to give it more detail so we're gonna be doing this and then we're gonna be doing a nice shot to the bottom. I'll show you how to get that and do all this inside cinema. So let's get started. So we're inside Cinema 4D and I know this layout is freaking you out. You're used to the standard layout or whatever layout you have. But what I have done is I made a standard layout with this thing called Object UV Editor. Now all this Object UV Editor does is basically just focus on UV ink. This doesn't focus on what you're doing in body paint because that's why I took it out. Now this is not a plugin, it's just a layout that loads up with your layout. So you can actually use the standard and customize it the way you want. So two is, I have some plugins inside this object UV editor, which call UV Toolbox, and you can download it as a plugin, okay? And perfect split, but let's go back to my normal layout, which we like to do, and this is our studio layout. I fly beyond studios so this layout help us to model faster because we have all our tools right there what we like to use when we extruding bevel you know connecting and welding and cutting you know using the knife tools all of them right here okay so this is my little model this is my little model and this is just basically a hanger and I just finished from UV in it okay and I'm just making sure you know everything is a perfect square the standards you know I have a couple of little garbage in the back okay so let's get started so we're in an object UV editor and first thing, thing I need to do is basically load up my file because I already started okay so let me go to layers so first thing first I'm gonna do is make a new layer and I'm gonna go to color so just because this is basically just a am uh, inclusion tutorial I'm not gonna go through each of these sections like oh there's a door let me put that red there's the hanger door let me put this as green. I'm not going to go through all those layers and do that. I'm just going to select all. I'm going to select a specific color and I feel like a nice little uh, green or white or however you want. And I'm going to go back to layers and then I'm going to hit fill polygons. There you go. So now what we need to do because this is going to help your bake to look a little bit more better. We need to zoom in and look at our thing. And this one thing with Cinema 40, I, I really don't understand, but it's just how it works. So the edges, like the, um, they look jaggy, right? So we need to fill these and all. And this when the outline polygons come in. But we need to make a new layer. And let's go back to colors and let's give this red. And I always like to do that, okay? And let me go back to layers and go back to my paint, my brush tool right here and go to brush attributes and then just scroll down, be in settings now. And I set mine to five, okay? And I make sure my spacing is to one my hardness is to 50 and these are the right settings okay so now let me go back to my layers 
select my layer and then select my uh, UV polygon mode and now I could just hit outline polygons and there you go so now if I rotate in the viewport you see my red lines appear good so what we're gonna do now we're gonna now save our texture save texture which I already done already and just to let you know you have different formats save texture has you have a whole list on what you want to save your texture I just I decided to save mine as a PSD because I'm going into Photoshop and click save and click yes okay good so now we can minimize out of uh, object UV editor and if you miss an exit I'll just generate the layout over okay just select it and just regenerate it see there you go and it'll be back so now what we need to do is we need to add our bake texture type okay good so we add our bake texture tag and we now need to send our bake texture tag to our desktop and I'm gonna call it hanger underscore a o and click save we want to change the format to a png okay options uh, select that click ok and we want to change our texture this is a 2k texture so that's 20 48 20 48 we want to put our sampling to 1 pixie border to 2 and continue UVs check and let's go to options and click on the inclusion okay just check that so before we click the bake button one thing we actually missing we are missing our our plane so we can make shadow to the bottom so let's do that quick let's go to create object plane all you guys hold down on the cube here and you will have plane right here okay so since we have our plane let's extrude it up oops sorry that's the wrong thing go in my mode object mode and now I can scale this up there you go pretty nice that's a good size or you get it close to it if you want but I prefer it like this nice and large so now since we have that what we need to do now is go to our render settings because we haven't finished with diamond inclusion let me just erase this and start this over so let's go to effect diamond inclusion and the first thing I like to do is my color I like to darken it up a little bit just darken it up uh you can you can leave your max and ray length you can turn it up if you want but uh i like to leave it at one and if you in centimeters just leave it at 100. so depression you can leave this at 55. accuracy you could leave this you could turn this up to 100. and the max samples you turn this to 128. And this is the right settings okay so since we figured out our I'm inclusion let's just make sure anti lacing set the best okay make sure that and that's pretty much it so we could X out of the render settings and now we can go back to our hanger select our hanger and then select the big texture tag and if you don't know where this is well in our layer we have it right here and then in objects we have big texture right here okay so since we already then did the settings for the big texture all we have to do now hit bake and let it just bake out so I'm just gonna click pause it may take about three minutes to five minutes okay so I'm gonna pause and come right back okay so it actually took five minutes so I'm just gonna right click, open window, move this here so we can see how it really looks. Oh, nice, really nice. Um, this really came out nice, really nice. Okay, so now let's apply this texture. Okay, let's apply the texture. And what I'm gonna do is go to materials. 
double click make sure your editor is set on to the 2k texture preview size because if you have this set on default it's gonna look like that it doesn't look nice so make sure set this to 2k texture if that's what you're using so now let's go to color and let's change it and let's change it to hanger find it on the desktop and I click no there you go. Wow. Nice, clean, clean. Yeah, nice. Well, I should have really just, you know, bend them in there one time. <laughs> okay. Pretty nice. Nice, smooth, clean bake. Yeah. Pretty good. Yep. So now we can delete the plane out. Really, there you go. Nice, perfect, clean bake. Yeah, really nice. Okay, so, okay, so we're in Photoshop. I just opened up my PSD file. And now we need to apply the ambient inclusion, right? But we can't apply the ambient inclusion with all these red lines in here. So what we need to do is we need to just make a new layer. And let's just give it a nice both filled in color and just combine the outline and the the uh the mean polygons let's just combine them into a smart object okay and let's just make this big little cube around it give it a nice color nice little wall color there you go and all we're gonna do just put hold alt and extract no sorry hold alt sorry we're going to hold alt and right click and drag until we get this nice little, little arrow, this little white cube, and then just click it. There you go. So now we have this nice little grayish looking texture. So let's go to file now, open up our ambient inclusion. There you go. And just click open. Now I know I could have used the replace, but I forgot. <laughs> so now we just need to double click this, turn it into a layer, um, duplicate layer, and send it to our PSD file. And let's just name this AO. Click OK. Go to Bay Texture. And now all you have to do is right click. No, not right click go to normal multiply there you go we have our bay texture on here and now we can just save it as a png click save click ok minimize go back into cinema and load it back up again find your texture click open yes and there you go X out of this, X out of that, minimize the object UV editor, and there you go. A perfect bake with the with the bake texture tie makes this. It's really nice. So I hope this method really helps y'all out. Okay, and you can do much more with the bake texture tie. If you really look at all the stuff that actually don't mind baking out for the attributes. It bakes out surface color, illumination, shadows, normal map, UV map. It, it, it's basically, you know, bump. It, it could bake out all of that, you know, and you can just play around with it and do fun stuff with it and get some good stuff. Okay, guys, I really hope that this tutorial was helpful. Uh, other than that, if you have any other questions, you can contact me on Facebook, you can contact me through Vimo, YouTube, and even flybeyondstudios.com, and you can even email me. So I'll have all those links inside the description for you, even the layouts, okay? So other than that, my name is Ashton Rule, and I'm from Fly Beyond Studios.